Hey guys, today I'm here with a brand new tag video for you guys, even though it is not a tag of my creation. Now, I was kind of stuck for video ideas, so I took to Twitter and the lovely Pippa from the book blog, The Little Book Owl, suggested that I do the tag that she just created on her blog, um, and that is called the Pelinor Book Tag. Now, I will get to that in a second, but in case you guys don't know who Pippa is, she is a book blogger, like I said, and you might have seen her floating around on Twitter and on Instagram because she always does a really good job of putting out really consistent, good bookish content. So if you're interested in some literary fiction, if you're interested in fantasy, or just really well thought out reviews, definitely go check out her stuff and I will link her blog in the description. So like I said, this is called the Pelinor book tag and I believe this is based on a fantasy series by the Australian author Alison Krogan, which I have not read, but according to Pippa, that doesn't really matter for this tag. So I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the questions. Because this tag is based on a fantasy series, I tried to get as um, fantasy related answers for all of these questions as possible, but there are a few random books in here, this one included. I definitely had to mention Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro, um, which is one of my favorite books of all time, mainly because even though it's been over a year since I last reread this, um, it still crops up in my thoughts every so often. Um, I just start thinking about it for no rhyme or reason whatsoever and I actively have to make myself not reread this for the millionth time every time I look at my bookshelves. This is kind of a literary dystopian novel, I guess, or um, a literary science fiction-y novel um, following a young woman named Kathy as she kind of looks back on her childhood and looks back on growing up as um, one person in this group of very secluded school children out in the English countryside. The theme discussed in here are very universal, specifically th this idea that um, we're all wondering how can we prove that we exist? I mean, isn't that why people write books? Isn't that why we make videos here on the internet? Because we want some way to prove that we exist as people, as beings on this planet. And wow, that got way more deep than I intended. This answer is definitely a bit of a throwback because this is So You Want to Be a Wizard by Diane Duane. This is the first book in the Young Wizards series. I'm not actually sure how many books are in this, but this first, or at least my edition, was published in 1983. So yeah, definitely a bit of a throwback. Like the title would suggest, this is a fantasy series focusing on two young people, one boy named Kit and one girl named uh, Juanita or Nita, who um, come across these wizarding manuals in different forms and then get sucked into this world of magic. There is another question in this tag about uh, magic systems and I probably could have used this book or this series for that question as well because this has um, kind of a quirky magic system that is definitely based on like uh, life energy but then also has all these like almost scientific elements to it uh, which I totally don't understand but that's actually why I picked this for this question is that the world and the magic is very complicated and even after having reread this probably upwards of five, six times, uh, I still don't think I have the greatest handle on it. I'm kind of cheating for this question because I am not only picking a book with two animal characters, but they're not even really animals, and that would be Dragon Rider by Cornelia Funk. Now, obviously, based on the title here, or based on the cover here, you can see we have a dragon companion who is named Fire Drake or Drake, and we have a little brownie here named Sorrel. I think both of the companions in this story are fantastic. Um, the main human character is a boy named Ben who is... Um, homeless and familyless, and they are really, they really do become one big family. Fire Drake, or Drake uh, the dragon, is very much a goody two shoes. He's really caring for Ben and he's very concerned about him. And Sorrel is more of a blunt, kind of self interested character, and yet at heart, she's just really one big softy. Another non-fantasy answer, but I had to use this book for this question, um, and that is The Girl Who Kicked the Hornet's Nest by Stieg Larsson. Obviously, the final book in the original Millennium Trilogy, the Elizabeth Salander novels, and a book I have talked about so many times here on the channel. Um, I it was even in my top five books of 2015. This is honestly the best series conclusion I have ever read, even though it wasn't really intended to conclude the series. Um, it really ties all of the crazy detail in this series together beautifully. Um, I thought it resolved the action, but left enough opening for obviously future books which are now happening under a different author. 
um, yeah, just really fantastic and very satisfying in a way that few fantasy series conclusions have ever been for me. For my favorite villain, I had to go with Capricorn from the Ink World trilogy by Cornelia Funk, and I probably could have put uh, a Cornelia Funk answer in for every single question, but I restrained myself. I know this is a middle grade series written for children, but Capricorn still is very creepy and very scary to me. Villains are generally evil within their books, but they're not real, you know, they don't actually infect the real world. But what's scary about Capricorn is that he has come to the real world, or the real world within this book, and brings his terror out of the fictional realm and into reality. And he's kind of a rumor for part of the book, and I feel like that anticipation of a villain um, really helps to to lend to his eerie factor. Honestly, I don't read that many fantasy series to start with, and when I do read true fantasy, generally speaking, I prefer a male protagonist. I don't know what that says about me, but I just, I'm not ever really fond of reading fantasy from a female perspective. So I had to go with another non-fantasy answer for this, and of course I want to mention Lizzie Bennet um, from Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I think Lizzie's imperfections are why we all are so fond of this book and why she is kind of the most famous Jane Austen character, and I don't really think I need to say any more about her. I really love this question and immediately knew my answer because I would love to study under Halt the Ranger from the Ranger's Apprentice series. Now, Halt is one of the most um, renowned, most well-respected uh, rangers in the realm. He is not only knowledgeable in all of the um, stealthy ranger arts um, and warfare, but in politics and in local legend and history, and I just feel like he would be a really cool guy to learn from. For a unique magic system, I definitely have to mention Inkheart by Cornelia Funk again, because like I said, she could apply to almost any question in this tag. Basically, the magic in this book is that Maggie, the protagonist, and her father Mo have the ability to read things out of books. So they can read characters out of books and they become real people in the real world, or they can read physical objects um, like piles of treasure. Now this magic and ability is never really um, explored deeply, like it's not explained at all, um, nor is the fact that some people have the ability to write words that are better read into reality than others, um, but I just think that's really cool and um, in lieu of a more uh, high epic fantasy series, I definitely had to mention this one. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was the first book to come to mind for this question, um, and obviously there are fawns and giants and centaurs and dwarfs and talking animals, and I don't really know how you get more mythical than that. I think this is going to be a pretty common answer for this question uh, because it is the original epic fantasy land, um, but Middle Earth. Obviously, there are so many different places within Middle-earth and so many different cultures that I think um, it has something to offer for everybody. But if you wanted me to get specific about locations within Middle-earth, I think I would have to go with three. Number one, Hobbiton, because I'm only four foot eleven and I think Hobbiton would be perfectly sized to me. Two, Edoras, or the capital of Rohan, because it's just like a more fantastical version of uh, medieval England. And Rivendell, because elves obviously. So those were all of the questions to the Pelinor tag, and I will put them all in the description box below in case you would like to do this tag for yourself. And while you're there, please go check out Pippa's original blog post. Um, I will link that as well. I should probably tag some people, seeing as this is the first video of this tag, um, but I didn't think about that ahead of time at all. So I'm just gonna put some names on the screen right now, and if you see your name, you are tagged. And on that note, that is all I have for today's video, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're having a fantastic day, and I will see you next time. Bye!